fiery horse with the speed of light, the cloud of dust, and a hearty high on silver, the Lone Ranger. Transcontinental Railroad was one of the most important steps in the winning of the West. The railroad was of prime importance to the future of the country, but powerful forces, cattlemen, stagecoach lines, and steamship companies opposed it. Outlaw opposition sprang up, and the Lone Ranger was commissioned by the president to lead the fight against the enemies of progress. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Huddles in trouble. We've got to hurry. I'll silver. In spite of the activities of the outlaw organization known as the Iron Spur, the work on the railroad progressed steadily. Beyond Kearney, in addition to Kilgrew and his men, there was the constant danger of Indians. Jim Blake says we needn't worry about Indians. He says to just keep putting these rails down and mind our own business. Sure, that's what he says. But I'll tell you why he says it, Pete. Why? There's no use worrying about Indians unless they go on the warpath. They do that, worrying won't help. It'll be too late to worry. Well, if they come, they come. That's all there is to it. Well, I reckon the best thing we can do is to work fast. Get through this country so much the sooner. That's the idea. Blake says a couple of three redskins from one of the tribes around here might come and look us over. If they do, we're to make out like we don't even see them. Then they'll go away? Probably. Hmm. Seems to me the best thing would be to shoot all we see of them. Well, that'd be just about the worst thing we could do. But there'd be that many less. Oh, one shot is all it would take. The whole tribe would be down on us in no time. Why, they wouldn't stop till they'd got every last one of us. Well, I reckon Blake knows. He's been around this part of the country long enough. Sure he knows. That's why he's the boss. There's one thing, though. What's that? Remember that gang that's trying to block our work? Kilgrew? Yeah. What is it his gang is called? Uh, Iron Spur. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Suppose those critters stir the engines up. Vern, I got a hunch there won't be no more trouble from the Iron Spur. Why do you say that, Pete? Well, me and the boss was talking last night. He told me that the Lone Ranger is just waiting for Kilgrew to make a move. Just one move, it's again the law, that's all. Only one move and then you'll have him. Mm, the Lone Ranger, huh? Yep. I guess we needn't waste time thinking about Kilgrew. That only coyote is up again, the Lone Ranger. Where's the Lone Ranger now? I don't know just where, but he's in this part of the country. And so is Kilgrew. I hear you talking about Kilgrew. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, we was talking about him. Hey, you're not one of the regular workers here. No. Who are you? Speak up. Strangers around this job got to identify themselves. Good for you, Pete. I've been here all day, and you're the first man that's asked me to account for myself. Well, then do it. Watch him sharp, Vern. No. <laughs> Pete, I'll tell Jim Blake about this. He'd be glad to hear that you're alert. Never mind a fancy talk, stranger. You just walk ahead of me and Vern. You're going to the office to answer a few questions from Jim Blake. I'd like to speak to Blake, but there isn't time. I've got to meet Tano at sundown. You're not meeting anyone until after you meet Jim Blake. Get along, stranger. You do what Pete says or I'll flatten your head with a railroad spike. Here, take this bullet. Huh? The bullet will identify me. Here, Silver. Silver? Is that the name of that white horse? Yes. 
took my mask off and disguised my face when I put on these clothes. Hey, Vern, that there bullet is solid silver. Hey there, big fella. Pete, the Lone Ranger. He's been working right along with us all day, and not one of us knows it. Hey, mister, wait a minute. Otto has been in Indian Village. He has? You'll find out how the Indians feel toward you railroad workers. If there's any danger in uprising, you'll know about it. Tell Jim Blake that I'll send word when I hear what tunnel reports. I'll tell him I sure will. Come on, Silver. The Lone Ranger headed north to meet his faithful Indian friend. Meanwhile, Tonto had left the Indian village and was riding south. Get on, scout! Pinto maintained a steady pace, covering the ground with long, easy strides. Ahead of him, Tonto saw three men in clothes like those worn by the railroad workers. He thought they might be hunting game for food and paid little attention to them as he drew nearer. He didn't know what those men were saying. It don't matter, boys, as long as he's a redskin. If he's a chief, so much the better. You ready to fire? I got my rifle ready for when you give the word. I can knock him off the saddle at this distance. Let him have it, then. But be sure you aim for his shoulder. Don't kill him. Right. I nailed him. Wait. We got to see if he moves. Sure. He's moving, see? I didn't kill him. It's all I wanted to know. Come on now. We'll get our horses and clear out. Silver, old boy, something certainly happened. Tana would have met us hours ago. Since he knew where we planned to camp. We'll just keep on until we reach the Indian tribe, eh? Silver, hold up, fella. Steady, boy. That's it, big fella. That horse answered you. Come on, Silver. Hold there. Whoa. Whoa, Silver. Tano, you come. Kimosabe, what's happened to you? Uh, be hit. Easy now, stay where you are. Don't get up till I have a look at you. Bullet hit plenty hard. Yes, I see it did. Who shot you? Fella from railroad. What? Me see three fella. Not know who, face long way off. But fellas from railroad. And they shot you? Uh, one fella lift rifle, shoot. Me fall from scout. This wound might have been worse, Tano. You'll be all right, but it'll be some time before you use your left arm. Yeah, you know that. I'll bandage you for the time being and get you to our camp. This will do for a bandage. I'll use the other part of the bandana to wash the wound. Uh, give us some. You've got water. Yes. Here's a canteen. Uh, 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 Not too much, Tonto. Uh, now give it to me. Did you talk to the Indians in the village? Uh, yeah, all, all plenty quiet now. They're not planning an attack on the railroad? Uh, no. How many Indians are there in the village? Four, maybe 500. Now, I'll fix a bandage on the wound. Tonto, if you went back to that village and told those Indians that you'd been shot by men from the railroad, what would happen? Indian get plenty mad. Indian make war on men at railroad. And that would be exactly what Kilgrew wants. Uh, Tonto, way. I'm going to take you to the camp and make you comfortable. And I'm going to leave you there alone. Me go with you. Me be all right. Plenty soon. There may be a lot for you to do later on. You'll need rest. Be ready for action. Uh, and what you do? I'm going to find Kilgrew. Him know you never get proof who fires shots. Steady. But he won't fire more shots at Indians if he knows we're watching him. Uh, he knows I want proof that he's a crook. He won't let me get that proof if he can help it. <laughs> there. Here, Scout. Now, Kimosabe, I'll get you in the saddle and back to camp. And I'll go to Kilgrew's camp. Uh, he's, he's standing all right. Easy, easy now. Up you go. I plan to see Kilgrew around daybreak, said a big fella. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. The Lone Ranger set a slow pace because of Tonto's wound. It was late at night when he arrived at camp. Meanwhile, miles away, a light was burning in a cabin in the woods. Kilgrew and his men sat around a table in the center of which a candle burned. I don't know what it is, but something's going wrong. Fool, are you sure you didn't kill that redskin? I know where I shot him. But he should be back to his tribe by this time. 
I tell you, our scheme's misfired. Well, let's get a couple of more redskins. I know doggone well those redskins will start a war if they get a reason. They're suspicious the railroad to start with. Are you afraid of the steam and choo-choo? Well, sure they are. They think it's magic of some sort. But they know that their arrows will kill the men that work on the railroad. And all they're waiting for is a good reason to start using those arrows. We'd have heard them on the war path long before now if they'd have found the man was shot. Listen, boys, I'm going to call on those redskins. Call on them? Yep. If they don't start on the war path by sunup, I'm right near the village. I know another way to start a war. Yeah, what is it? I'll tell you, and you'll have to get busy. There'll be lots of preparations to make. But I guarantee that this time there'll be a fight that won't end till every last one of those railroad workers is dead with an arrow through his head and his scalp hanging from a redskin's belt. Morning found the Lone Ranger riding toward the cabin where the Kilgrew gang stayed. He reined up at the door. Steady, Silver. <laughs> Dismounted and walked in. You. Hey, what's up? Well, so you're all awake. I want to see Kilgrew. Lone Ranger. You got a lot of nerve to come here. It doesn't take nerve. You crooks wouldn't dare shoot. Kilgrew wouldn't take that chance because the law might prove murder against him. Keep your guns down, boys. Now, where's your boss? You don't see him around here, do you? No. Well, then, Van Moose, you got nothing against us. Nothing I can prove yet. There will be. What are these arrows doing here? Well, them's just Indian arrows. It was here in the cabin when we came. Now, look here. Why don't you leave us alone and stop hounding us? We're not doing anything wrong. Just trying to wreck the railroad job. Come on in here, Kilgrew. I told you that he'd left. He hasn't been gone long. You're all smoking cigarettes. But this cigar on the table is still warm. Kilgrew smokes cigars. He left on an errand. All right, Poole. I'll find him. There's heavy dew, and he'll track through it. Suit yourself. One thing more. Kilgrew did what I think he did. Don't expect him back. Silly big fella. Come on, Silver! The tracks of Kilgrew's horse were plainly marked on the plain. In a few moments of hard riding, the masked man sighted the outlaw's leader. He quickly cut down the distance. Kilgrew, I want to talk to you. No, you don't. Get him back. Go on, Silver. Faster, boy. Faster. Hurry up. Oh, oh, there, Silver. Oh, guys, let go my brother. You, huh? What do you want? I want to ask you a few questions, Kilgrew. Last night, someone shot an Indian. Oh, that's so? You knew it, didn't you? Hey, look here. Why don't you let me alone till I bust the law? You can't prove anything. I suppose you couldn't understand why the Indians didn't start a war. Well, it was Tonto whom you shot. Tonto, I... I... I mean, I don't know anything about a redskin being shot. Likely it was men from the railroad. You know better than that. I know those railroad workers are just taken to kill some Indians. They don't like the way the redskins stand around and watch them work. They like to drive the redskins off. The fact is, I'd uh, heard about plans to kill Indians. I was riding to warn the chief in the village. Oh, you were? Sure. That won't be necessary. No? No, Tonto isn't badly hurt. He can take your message to the Indians. Nice. But I'll take my own message. Put down the gun, Kilgrew. You're going with me. Your scheme is easily seen through. You've wondered why the Indians weren't on the war path. So you're heading for the village to find out. While you're there, you'll tell lies about the railroad men. The next time you shoot an Indian, the war will really start. I said I'd take my own message to the Redskins. This gun is ready to talk. No, it isn't. If you shoot me, you'll at last commit the crime that will hang you. <laughs> I can shoot, and I'll have every one of my men swear I've done it in self-defense. You're going with me. I'm going with it. Hold on. Don't draw a little ranger. I warn you. Leave me be. Then shoot. Not quite fast enough, Kilgrew. Oh, my hand. The bullet didn't hit your hand, just your gun. As I said before, you're going with me. You got nothing against me. Not a shred of proof. I will have. If your men didn't shoot Tonto, you'd be free to do what you please. But if they did fire that shot, Kilgrew, you're going to confess it and sign the confession. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
now to continue our story. The Lone Ranger rode into camp with Killigrew ahead of him. Tonto rose to his feet, his strength regained by a night of rest. Steady, Silver, Silver, who? You bring Crook? Yes, we're going to make him confess. I've done nothing to confess. Him, fellow, who shoot me? I'm sure of it. I think that he's told his men to shoot other Indians. Me fix oh, him. Wait. Tonto, we'll get a signed confession from him. Evidence that will jail him. I won't sign a confession. Can uh, you ride back to that village, Kimosabe? And see Indian? Yes. Tell them to stay in their village today. Warn the chief that there's danger. And none of the Indians are to come from the village to the railroad. And when you come back, bring some Indian clothes with you. For what? You'll find out. A buckskin shirt? Yes, and two eagle headdresses. Clothes for Kilgrew and me. Ah, uh, time to do that. Are you Are you sure you can make the trip? Oh, me plenty strong now. Won't not matter much. All right, I'll wait here for you. Ah, uh, you scout. We start right now. Get him up, scout! What's the idea of putting me in an Indian's outfit? You'll find out as soon as Tonto returns. In the meantime, Kilgrew, I'll tie you to this tree to be sure you stay with me. Tonto rode hard in spite of the wound in his shoulder. He reached the Indian village and went to the chief. These two friends exchanged few words. The chief nodded, then spoke to one of the braves nearby. In a few moments, Tonto had the Indian clothing and was on his way back to the Lone Ranger. When he arrived at the camp... Oh, Scott, oh, fella. Oh, oh, here. Here, Indian clothes. Good. Now, Kilgrew, you'll dress in this outfit. I'm hanged if I will. You can't make me. You know why? No, and I don't care why. You I... do what, mask man? Oh, hold on. You Put do what? Mask. All right, all right. I don't see the sense of it. I'll tell you the sense of it, Kilgrew. You were going to warn the Indians that there might be an attack on them. Well, we'll see if you're right. Well, I tell you, I, I know for a fact that none of the men from the railroad will make any attack. If there is one, it'll be because you ordered your men to make it. You alone know whether or not an attack is planned. Hey, Sebi. Tonto, did the Indians promise to remain in their village? Ah, uh, that's what Chief promised. You hear that, Kilgrew? The only men who will ride in Indian dress today are you and I. If your men are planning to shoot Indians, we'll be the ones who will be hit. So that's your scheme. Yes, it is. <laughs> Good, I'm all for it. Let's get started. Kilgrew seemed genuine in his eagerness to follow the masked man's instructions. He pulled the buckskin pants over his own, then pulled the buckskin jacket over his head. He donned the eagle bonnet and even submitted willingly, almost eagerly, to the application by Tonto of dark stain to his face. Oh, uh, fix me up any way you like. You think you're going to get me to bust down and confess a lot of things to save my hide, you look? Why should I worry about being shot? We'll see. The Lone Ranger knew Kilgrew was a coward. He thought the man was bluffing, yet there was certainly a convincing manner about him. Round up, Kilgrew. We're going through with it. Steady. Sure, I'm about up. <coughs> yeah. I suppose you know you're taking the same risks I am. I'm willing to take them. Come on. Get up there. Come on, sir. With Kilgrew slightly ahead of him, the Lone Ranger headed for the Indian camp, then cut to the trail that led to the railroad. Here he slowed the horses. Watched Kilgrew and was puzzled by the air of confidence. There wasn't the slightest sign of fear in the outlaw's manner. Could the masked man have been mistaken? No one else would have fired at the Indians. There's no one else around here. Just railroad men and Kilgrew's gang. Kilgrew's a coward. He'd be afraid if he thought his men were waiting to fire. What's the matter? Are you finally waking up to the fact you're all wrong about me? Kilgrew, turn around. Hey. Eh? Trying to turn back and then ride this trail again. Anything you say. The two riders, dressed as Indians, once more rode over the trail, and Kilgrew became more taunting with each long mile. The afternoon advanced and twilight came. It sure takes a lot to convince you I told the truth. How much longer do you want to ride up and down this trail? <laughs> as long as I'm concerned, keep it up all night. ignored Kilgrew. He 
was deep in thought as he tried to reason out the plans of the schemers. It must have been Kilgore's men. No one else would shoot an Indian. Right or late, it's all right with me. The men on the railroad know what an Indian attack would mean. Open warfare. <laughs> you thought I'd be afraid of being shot by my own friends, eh? His friends couldn't recognize him. They wouldn't wait till after dark to shoot. The Indians would identify them as railroad men. I told you, didn't I? What's the matter? You lost your tongue? Kilgore's a clever schemer. What was there about that cabin? Something I saw there. The man had been up all night. What's the matter? Speak up. Something I saw in that cabin. Something that wasn't just right. What was it? Ground of taunts against the slow rhythm of the horse's hoofs, the Lone Ranger tried to recall every detail of the cabin in the woods. He had a strange feeling that there was something out of place. It was something that had been without meaning at the time, but now he began to think of the things he had seen one by one. The men looked as if they'd been up all night. Candles still burning on the table, a large can of coal oil on the floor. What else was in that cabin? Men, cigarettes, coal oil, Kilgrew's cigar, still warm. The Indian arrows, the dirt on the floor. Those Indian arrows wrapped in waste. Indians used pitch on fire arrows. The coal oil. Kilgrew. Huh? What's the matter with you? Now we're going to ride. Head for the railroad. If we travel fast, we'll make it shortly after dark. Railroad? What? Never mind the questions. Get going. I'll start your horse. Get along there. Come on, Silver. Hey, what's the big idea? You'll find out soon enough. Get going and keep going. Come on, Silver. At last, the Lone Ranger knew the answer. Riding at top speed, he dropped the reins around the saddle horn and hauled off the Indian jacket. He took his own hat from behind the saddle. With it, replaced the war bonnet. From beneath his own shirt, he took a mask and set it in place across the upper part of his face. Now he was the masked rider. The Lone Ranger racing against time. Darkness fell while he and Kilgrew dashed south. Meanwhile, Kilgrew's gang had gone to a shallow arroyo near the railroad camp. They carried Indian bowls, the arrows they had made, and a large can of coal oil with them. Poole was in command. All set now, boys. Be sure you give those arrows one more dip into the coal oil so they'll burn real good. How about it if the railroad men come after us? Yeah, they won't. How do you know they won't charge us? Because of two things. Kilgrew has them doped out. Now, the main concern of the railroad men will be to see that none of the arrows start the buildings on fire. Oh. And then, too, they won't know but what there's a hundred or more redskins attacking. They'll wait till the engines close in, and then they'll fight to the finish. But we ain't going to close in. No, we'll go away. And then the railroad men will start in the morning and go after the Indians. Now, get ready. I'll fire the first arrow. Jake, touch a match to it. Right. That does it. Here she goes. Work, work. Call the man. It's Redskins. Fire arrow. Here comes another. Hey, fellas, rouse up. Get out. Get pails of water. Redskins. The only coyotes are attacking us. Get water. They're firing for the North Arroyo. Oh, never mind the Redskins. Protect the buildings. They're coming fast now. Never mind the ones that hit the ground. Stand ready to throw water on the ones that hit the building. I bet Kilgrew had a hand in this. They're getting closer. I'll give them redskins something to think about. Some of us can pick them off while the others stand guard against fire. Let them have it. No use firing the devil. We can't hit him at the bottom of the arroyo. Keep shooting anyhow. Let them know they better not stick their heads up. The dirty Just wait till Jim Blake gets back here. He'll have us attack those critters and burn their whole doggone village to the ground. While the railroad men fired back without hope of hitting anyone, the Lone Ranger drew near. Fire arrows. That's the answer. All right, Kilgrew, you can rain out. I won't. Uh, and I'll help you. Hey, let me go. Take this rope off. Put me off my horse. All of you, stop. I'll rope you. The law takes over. Oh, wait. You can't prove anything. You can't do this. There. That'll hold you for the time being. Your plan was to make the railroad men think the Indians were attacking. Fire arrows in the darkness, huh? Come on, Silver. That's enough. Who are you? Go down those bows. Oh, oh, Silver, give your hands off your guns. Smash, man. I said no guns. Oh. That goes for you too, Poole. You wanted a fire, huh? Well, I'll fix one for you. Stay there, Silver. I'll just spill this can of oil. Now you see here, wait. 
I've fired up so the railroad men can see who's firing at them. The Lone Ranger dropped a match on the spilled oil. Flames leaped high, flooding the arroyo with brilliant light. Now you can all walk forward. Let the railroad men have a look at you. Every doggone one of them. <laughs> By Ginger, he's got killed with the others. Now you gotta let me explain. We didn't do no harm. Fool, you done a plenty. Any lawman will take care of them, Vern. Hold them until Blake gets back from the end of the track. We'll hold them all right enough. To think that these rattlers was aiming to rouse us up to making an attack on the friendly engines. Doggone it all, you critters should hang for a trick like that. Pete, it's the end of kill group. Yeah, but say, mister, how'd you figure out what the critters was planning to do? I wasted a lot of time, Pete. I saw those arrows in their cabin this morning. I didn't realize the importance of them until it was almost too late. That was when I remembered the coal oil. We'll see that these hombres get all that's coming to them. And remember this night, the Indians start trouble, don't be too quick to blame them. Look for another agitator like Kilgrew. You bet we will. Now I'm going back to Toto. Steady, big fella. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.